Are you a barbarian who feels like your 16 constitution score is not doing enough for your character outside of a couple extra hit points? Are you a champion who's tired of being punished for wanting to inflate their hit point pool and improve their fortitude saves? Are you a monk? Well, today I'm coming at you with some really, really good news. You might be playing with free archetype at your table or not. Maybe you're playing the game wrong. That's totally fine. <laughs> Seriously, play with free archetype, it's so fun. But Rage of Elements just came out and brought with it a whole new class, the Kineticist. And no, this still isn't the deep dive because I'm procrastinating. What this is though, is a little piece of um information. I'm letting you know that with a new class comes a new archetype. And y'all, the Kineticist multi-class archetype might be the single best multi-class archetype option in the game. And no, that is not clickbait. That is not exaggeration. I firmly believe the kineticist archetype is the best in the game. And I'm going to back that up with some evidence here in this video as we cover that archetype. So if you find this video useful or you want to see more Pathfinder 2e content in the near future, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. And thank you to all of you who have been watching lately. It's been really helpful. Uh, honestly, life has still been rolling on and on and never stopping with the waterfall of garbage coming down around us, but we're doing what we can. And lately I've been trying to dive a little bit more into work just as a distraction. So hopefully that'll mean more videos for y'all, more stuff going on. And on that subject of giving myself more work, the Patreon is reviving. I have not posted to the No Not Once Patreon in a while. So first off, I want to say thank you so much to everybody over the past year or so for continuing to be pledged over on the Known At Ones Patreon. Your continued support has helped me out immensely financially with inflation and all the stuff that cost money over the last three months. Without your support, I can confidently say we would not be as okay as we are right now. But with that behind us, we are now ready to unveil a whole new type of Patreon content, and that is going to be the Pathfinder 2e homebrew. It's the same stuff I used to be doing, but now I'm doing it again. I put out a poll for what you guys wanted to see, and while it was a little bit close to a PF2 live play, the greater majority really wants to see some unique Pathfinder 2e homebrew with art. I've made some really great friends over the last few months, and I'd love to give some of them some extra work uh, helping to design some of these items, monsters, maybe even classes sometime in the future. So if that kind of homebrewed content sounds like your cup of tea, feel free to click a link in the description and pledge to the Know Not Ones Patreon page. Hopefully by the time this comes out, I will have overhauled the Patreon page and the new tiers will all make sense. Also, just to clarify anything, no, none of this homebrew will be related to Sinclair's library in any way. They are separate entities, and while Sinclair's library content is going through like 12 different sets of eyes of playtesting and balancing and editing, mine is going through one set of eyes. These ones. So if you want to support the channel financially and occasionally get your hands on some new PF2 content you can use, click on the link in the description, pledge on Patreon. Thank you so much. Let's talk about the Kineticist archetype because this thing is broken. So what does the dedication give you? Well, not much. The dedication's pretty garbage. You get to choose one element. You can channel that element and you can make an elemental blast with that element. That's pretty much it. You also get trained in the Kineticist class DC and impulse attack roles, which use your constitution modifier. Just to emphasize how not very good this dedication is, you can't even attack with an elemental blast when you channel your element. That is only a base kineticist feature. Usually for one action, you can channel and blast. If you're taking the dedication, you need to spend one action channeling and then one or two actions blasting. So honestly, especially at level two, a little 1d8 plus four blast isn't that great. It's kind of like a cantrip. You could think of this as getting a basic damaging cantrip from the dedication, which does make it seem better. But also, this damage does not scale by itself, which we'll get to later when we talk about the improved Elemental Blast feat. At level 4, you can also take the base Kinesis feature, which is the one I said kind of relies on your GM to be as good and powerful as it can be. Uh, on its own, base Kinesis is fine. That's not what we're taking the archetype for. No, we're taking the archetype for Through the Gate. 
Through the Gate and Advanced Elemental Control. These are your get a feat up to half your level feats. And if you were stuck to the Universal Kinetisys feats, this archetype would be worthless. But no, you can take Impulse feats. Through the Gate at level 4 allows you to take any first or second level Kineticist feat, including impulses of the element you chose. And the reason this is so absolutely broken is that Kineticist feats scale based on your level. Some of these can be incredibly broken on the right characters and not sacrifice that much. You know, a lot of the times if you are taking a spell casting archetype, like the wizard archetype, you're pretty held back. You know, you're only getting a first level spell at like character level four or six, I think. But with this one, if you take magnetic pinions at level four with through the gate, it scales up because you're a level four character. So all of a sudden you just picked up a feat that lets you deal 4d4 damage to three targets. Now, again, it's gonna use your kineticist impulse attack rolls, which is going to be constitution, and after a certain level, your normal attack rolls are going to outscale it. But you know where this becomes insane is saving throw based impulses. As you can see on screen, Winter's Clutch. Two action, 10 foot burst, 2d4 damage, reflex save, but wait, your character level 4, meaning this is actually dealing 3d4 cold damage. And I would like to emphasize this is a reflex saving throw. Suddenly, your melee fighter can make their one huge attack at their full attack bonus, and then use a saving throw ability with Winter's Clutch, it's like something that a spellcaster can do. Now you get to make your big accurate attack roll and use a reflex save. Sure, the saving throw uses your kineticist class DC, which is based on your constitution, but that's still gonna be more accurate than taking minus five on a melee attack. Plus, it's a basic reflex save, so even if the average enemy succeeds, you're still dealing half damage. This is amazing on something like a precision ranger, who only cares about hitting once. Attack with your big weapon, boom, you deal your precision damage, and now you have two actions left, yeah, you could attack again at minus five, probably gonna miss, and you won't get your precision damage even if you hit, but Winter's Clutch, AoE, two action saving throw, no penalty because it's not an attack roll. Now, the big thing holding this back is this part of the impulse trait. Impulses, alongside channeling your element, does require a free hand. So you're not going to be wielding a two-handed greatsword and channeling kineticist elements. But if you're using something like a longsword or some kind of powerful one-handed weapon, along with channeling your element, you could do a lot of good with this. This is why it's especially good for monks who don't need to be holding a weapon to deal a lot of damage. You're in your stance, you're doing your 1d12 dragon attack, and then you Winter's Clutch for a bunch of bonus cold damage. Not only are you getting more types of damage into your repertoire, but it's more reliable damage because you're not dealing with that multiple attack bonus. And this isn't even to mention the other kineticist feats that you could take that help you in roleplay, that help you in other different ways, like giving you armor and a shield while still being able to channel elements. There is so much cool stuff available here. It doesn't really come online until you start getting feats at level 4, but once you can start getting feats at 4 and then again at 8, I know the advanced element control is feat level 6, but there's no other impulse feats until 4th level, so you really don't want to take that until level 8. But the wide amount of versatility this can give your fighter, your monk, your barbarian is incredible. Just keep in mind if you're a barbarian, you can't use these impulses while raging, but you can use them while you're not raging. So you could use them to engage a fight and then go into your rage later. There's a few more feats to go over here, but they're pretty simple. Improved Elemental Blast increases the number of damage die of your Elemental Blast by one. And you can take this again at levels 14 and 18. This is hard to recommend because you are spending four of your 10 class feats just to get a stronger Elemental Blast, which at that point, you might as well just take a Kineticist and pick something else as your archetype. Granted, with the free archetype variant, that is a much less taxing tax. 
Look, they had to hold the archetype back somehow, and that's how they chose to do it, which I can understand. You're already getting so much versatility with this archetype that an auto-scaling elemental blast would have been overkill. Add element is another fantastic feat. You get to add a second element, so even if you're not a primary kineticist, you can still channel two elements. And on top of that, it comes with an impulse feat for that element, allowing for some Probably some of the deepest character customization Pathfinder 2E has seen up to this point. Now, you can play like a monk with two different elements, impulse feats from each of those elements all coinciding with your monk decisions and feats you've taken, not to mention any other class combo you can think of. This is so deep. It goes so deep, and what I love is that this archetype can probably be useful on almost any class. Will it always be the best choice? Probably not, but any class can benefit from constitution. And if you've made a wizard with 18 intelligence and 16 constitution, then suddenly if you're out of spell slots, you don't need to rely on cantrips. You could rely on some potentially devastating impulses, which might even outperform your cantrips in the right situation. This feat even allows you to take compound hybrid impulses if you choose to going forward. So you can go back, take the improved in elemental control at like level 12 or 14, and then take a hybrid compound impulse for even more crazy shenanigans. And then finally at level 12, you can get a plus two to both the class DC and your impulse attack rolls by improving, impeding, increasing your proficiency to expert. That is the biggest thing holding this archetype back it caps at expert, and that is just fine, because with the amount of versatility, with the amount of options you can pick from using this archetype, there is no reason it should ever reach master proficiency. So yes, I stand by what I said at the beginning of this video. The kineticist archetype is the single strongest multi-class archetype in the entire game. I don't think it's the strongest archetype in the game, I still think that goes to Beastmaster, but kineticist, from all the multi-class archetypes, which usually aren't that great, this one is amazing. And I think there's something to be said that the quality and power of a multi-class archetype is directly correlated to the number of different feats available to the core class. I used to think the fighter archetype was absolute garbage, and the dedication really is, but fighters have access to some of the most amazing feats in the game, so being able to get those on your character is amazing. I had a friend who played an Animal Instinct Barbarian who archetyped into fighter for combat grab, and that was devastating. Versatility is key in this game, and the Kineticist archetype will get you so many different options available to you. The same base character could build out just this archetype an innumerable amount of different ways. So if you've got your barbarian animal instinct and you just want to be able to use your constitution in some clever ways, pick up the Kineticist archetype. I don't think you'll be very disappointed. And that's it for me. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. We just passed that 50,000 mark and we're already closing on 51k. Pretty damn cool. You're pretty damn cool for that. You know that? Thank you. And don't forget to scroll into the description and click on the Known At Ones Patreon link to go and pledge and support me over there and get some cool PF2 homebrew designed by yours truly right every week or two weeks or I haven't decided to schedule yet. Have you, can you tell I'm recording this in advance? That's it for me, y'all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time... I'm turning my fan back on. Later!